This is what they fear. A group of politicians in our nation that are trying to deceive people while an army, an invading army, comes across our borders. I have a couple of stories right now, a, a threat declared by one of the highest up, highest ranking people in our border patrol agency. A story also about the New York mayor running like a little coward, deciding not to go to the southern border because he's afraid. You know, the leaders in our country are all cowards. There is a plan a long time ago in our military to get rid of intelligent people, people with conviction, and they put a bunch of simpletons in. I'm not joking. It really was a plan. I saw it firsthand over the course of the last couple of decades. It's like people higher up in our military are dumber than the people that come right in on the lower ranks. This is very serious, what is happening in our country right now. Before I start these uh, news stories, I want to tell you about a story of my, my own. I was in Dallas, Texas at a conference about eight months ago. I went to a hotel. It was a, uh, I don't remember the name of the hotel. I walked in and there were people looking at me, men, around the age of, oh, 20 to 25. They wouldn't really want to make eye contact with me, but when they did, the look on their face was not a kind one. They were in the lobby of the hotel, and I could tell none of them knew each other, but they are all the same type of person. I was checking in, and the manager made it a point to tell me of the hotel that the third floor was closed for due to renovations. Me with my construction background, knew as I drove up to the hotel to have an entire floor of a hotel uh, blocked off. And I've been, one of my business partners, you know, renovates hotels. I knew I would see equipment around. I saw no equipment, no storage. So I went straight to the third floor. What I found were hundreds and hundreds of illegal immigrants packed into the third floor of a hotel. They were being, they were being put up there by the government. They were urinating all over the floor. And that's, you know, I get, okay, different cultures, whatever. You just, you know, find carpet in a hallway of a hotel. You just pee on it. Um, it was the looks that they gave me. I was the outsider. I wasn't welcome there. I noticed how nicely they were all dressed, too. All wearing uh, Nikes, Converse, um, fashionable clothes. Very interesting. I know this hit me because the look they gave me was that of disgust. They didn't like me. I was not welcome on that third floor. That third floor was theirs. I believe that that is how they're gonna start to look at our country. I watched the video, not in disbelief, because I understand where we are in our country, in our country's history right now, this is scary of the young man that was flipping off the cameras as he was being let go from New York because they, the New York prosecutors would not prosecute him after brutally beating police officers. I, uh, I'm just gonna go off on another story here. There is a, a, a gentleman that I worked with for a, a while, very liberal mindset. He, was con he is completely deceived by his education you know, it's funny, uh, liberals and academics are completely deceived people. They esteem themselves based off of the education they got in an education system that esteems fools. They most of the time don't even realize they make the same amount of money as everyone else that doesn't have that education. This person just bought a weapon, a firearm, and because he is starting to see the light. He is starting to see how important it is to arm and protect his family. And I have to say, I completely commend that. I am 100% believer in the right to bear arms and to protect ourselves. And I used to tell people in the fire service, actually everywhere, even at church, I said, every single time a 
a citizen of America, a legal citizen, buys a legally registered firearm, it pushes the government back just a little bit more because what happens, they have all the data. They know what percentage of citizens own a weapon. So it's that much harder as more and more citizens buy a registered firearm to take them away. How many of you type one believe in the right to bear arms and protect your family? So right now we are in a, a world where a nation where we are being told, no, we're, the government's gonna protect you. It's not your job, it's the government's. If something bad happens to your house, we're gonna call the police and you're gonna wait the five minutes of horror so that they can show up with the firearms. This is a very serious time we're in. Being in emergency medicine, I have seen the aftermath of the time delay it takes us, emergency responders, both firefighters and police to get there. I have been in this situation and I've seen other firefighters in a situation where we have had to jump on people with a weapon in order to help the attack that was being perpetrated on, it was being done on a police officer. And I think that right now where we are is a huge clarion call for the nation. I wanna, before I start this story, I wanna ask you this, and please be honest. If you've never owned, a, and, and, and I want you to understand this, please too. Owning a firearm is a, a massive responsibility. You need to train, be trained on proper use and safety of a firearm, a weapon. But how many people here do not own one? And just by hearing these stories about the border crisis and what's happening right now with our nation's police being defunded by a bunch of liberal Democrats, we need to, again, hashtag down below, boycott Dems, get rid of them. They want to take away even more protection. How many of you are starting to say, you know what, I need to go and pick myself up a, a firearm legally, go get trained on it in case I have to use it. There are countries that require every citizen to have a firearm in case they go to war. We are not in that position. And I think pride comes before a fall and America has become too prideful. Now, here's the first story that I want to share with you. U.S., this is out of CBS. Thank heavens it's out on the mainstream. U.S. Border Patrol chief calls the southern border a national security threat, citing 140,000 immigrants who invaded capture. It says in an exclusive interview with CBS, U.S. Border Patrol chief Jason Owens called the situation at the southern border a national security threat expressing concern about tens of thousands of migrants who have evaded apprehension and entered the country uh, over the past five years. Owens said Border Patrol, and, and I'm going to be 100% totally honest with you, I believe that this is uh, an embellishment of the truth. This is not, this is not the truth. There's way more than 140,000 that have went without capture. You can't go on the internet and not see the tens of thousands of people lined up at the border crossing in every day. We're talking millions of people. So the mainstream media is trying to suppress this or downplay this, but they, they have to report on it because it's trending. It's a, it's a big deal, it's important. All the while our coward of a president uses it as blackmail. If you don't give me money for wars, I'm not gonna secure the border. He is not gonna secure the border. Type two, if you agree with that. He is not planning on securing the border. He's using it as blackmail. Type three, if you want to see this border secured, and, and it's a big deal to you. I'd be typing three like crazy right now. Owen said Border Patrol is closing in on recording one million apprehensions of migrants in between ports of entry along the U.S.-Mexico border in the 2024 fiscal year. One million apprehensions but most of them are just sent back or just there's just nothing that happens, right? Or like New York, the coward uh, mayor that we're about to talk about in the next story, he just, you know, the D DA is like, we're not gonna prosecute. You can beat our hurt, physically harm our police force. That's what they're saying. We'll just get them sent over to another state. I'm sure they went to California. That, that liberal cesspool that's ran over in Sacramento by the head demon himself, Newsom. Oh, we'll just send them over there. We're all buddies. That's what they're saying. He says, for the third consecutive year, his agency is on track to record 2 million apprehensions by the time the fiscal year ends. At the end of September, Owens added. 
That number is a large number, but what's keeping me up at night is the 140,000 known got aways, Owen said in his first exclusive interview as Border Patrol Chief, referring to migrants who are um, detected by cameras and sensors crossing into the U.S. illegally, but not apprehended. Why are they risking their lives and crossing in areas where we can't get to, Owen's asked. Why are they hiding? What do they have to hide? What are they bringing in? What is their intent? Where are they coming from? Now, I will tell you this, in that hotel, the story I said earlier about the third floor being shut down, there were no Mexicans in that room. Pakistan. Other countries outside of South America. That's who I saw. If you look at the lines of men, young men, fighting aged men that have a lot of energy and a lot of disdain for the Western cultures because to them, we're, we're a bunch of prissy, stuck up rich people. And I gotta be honest, I can't, I can't, I can't, I don't blame them. I think America has gotten so big and so fast, the youngest country to be an empire. I mean, we ha we're a blip in world history and we're doing a lot of damage because the politicians that we can't stand that are running this country right now are running the world and they're doing really bad things in other countries. We watch movies about them these days. Three letter agencies in the past during Vietnam and other countries, uh, other uh, conflicts doing heinous things, horrible things behind the scenes. The public of these other countries that have been affected know this to be true. Yet we all watch movies and are entertained by it. The next story I wanna read is this, and it's about this mayor. It's disgusting, total coward. We have a lot of cowards running the country from ivory towers. New York City Mayor, this story is out of the hill. New York City Mayor cancels trip to Southern border due to safety concerns. Well, isn't that real nice? I'm sure he was gonna have a full, complete security detail, people with guns walking around to make sure he's safe anyway, but he's so scared about what's going on down there. He's obviously not afraid enough to prosecute any of these illegal immigrants that are absolutely destroying cities, like the city of New York. New York City Mayor Eric Adams canceled an expected Sunday trip to the US-Mexico border in the wake of raised safety concerns as his office confirmed to the Hill. Adams was expected to leave for the US-Mexico border on Saturday to visit Brownsville and McAllen, Texas to meet with humanitarian leaders. He was invited by Sister Norma Pimentel, executive director of Catholic Charities of, a, of the Rio Grande, a spokesperson of the New York City Hall wrote to the Hill. As Lent draws to a close, our team was excited to stand with faith and humanitarian leaders, and just you know, uh, Mayor Adams is neither of those, uh, who have dedicated their lives to serving uh, the most needy among us. And we're eager to discuss our work in New York City and explore new ways to collaborate with leaders in cities across the country. Uh, Mayor Adams, stay in New York. We don't need you anywhere else in this country. You, you, are, you are a stain on American politics, and you just need to disdain from leaving New York. Stay in your little ivory tower with your guards with guns while the city runs amok, you coward. Type five if anyone out there agrees with me. These politicians need to be called out for what they are, they're cowards. But due to safety concerns at one of the cities we were gonna visit in Mexico flagged by the US Department of State, we've decided to pause this visit. Well, hey, Mayor Adams, why don't you nut up real quick and just go down to the Texas area? Just do that. You're gonna blame this on not going to a city in Mexico? All you do is cancel that part of your trip. Coward, coward. We don't need cowards running our country right now. We need real men and women of conviction to actually stand up and do something about what's going on. This ain't a joke. It was not immediately clear what prompted these concerns. 
The canceled trip comes as New York City faces its own challenges in housing and influx of migrants in the city. Adams was one of the various mayors to sound the alarm over needing more resources to deal with the surge in immigrants. Are you kidding? Hey, Mayor Adams, why don't you go to your district attorney and say, did you see the video of my police officers being physically just destroyed by these migrants? Prosecute them to the full extent of the law. Make a make a example out of these tyrants. That's what you need to do. Good job, Mayor Adams. Should be stripped of your authority, but that's the problem. In these cities, they become so powerful, so liberal. And you look at what's going on with Trump. They took they, <laughs> what they're trying to do in court to slow him down. Totally illegal. We are watching our nation's judicial system go to total and utter crap. There are some amazing people, amazing American patriots that are in our judicial system. We've seen a handful of them really stand up for our rights recently, only to come under fire or that an appeal go to a different court to a liberal judge. We have been sitting on the sidelines for way too long. Military leaders that were real leaders have been let go or forced out under the uh, uh, fear of losing their pension. We have seen over the last few decades, our country becoming run by complete and utter fools. But really, are they? Look at what they're accomplishing right now. This is my call to you. And I think this is very important. It's important to have a month or maybe a couple months supply of food and a water filter right now. And this is why. I believe that there will be a day in our nation where cities across the nation are burning because of mass riots due to people that should not be here legally and people that are angry and frustrated and stressed out because of inflation squeezing their livelihood. And I think it's very important to sit back and not be part of the chaos. I've watched during heightened times of stress in emergencies uh, good people being sucked in to bad things. Either they think they can get away with it, one, or they truly believe passionately that they need to do something about it, they're going to be able to make change, and it never ends up good. We need to wake as many people up because, and I've seen this in my own hometown, where people that were paid to start a riot, they didn't succeed that day were riling up our townspeople and they would have succeeded if there weren't more of us to wake the people up that were starting to get excited and say, look, these people are being paid to do this. They're not like you or me. Don't dive in. Don't get sucked in. That's exactly what the government wants. They want fear in our hearts. But right now I'm exposing like the New York mayor, the fear in his mind. He doesn't even have the ability to go down to Texas. These are our leaders. It's time to replace them. Hope you got something out of this. The Economic Ninja is out.